parade the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem will be sung by musician first class Dan Smith from the Navy Band Northeast. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs burned, Our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Retire the colors. Chaplain Douglas E. Rosander, Naval War College Chaplain, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. From ancient scripture, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Merciful God in heaven, we ask for your presence with us today. Graduation marks a milestone in the life of each one being recognized for their many months of hard work and perseverance. These students have been stretched, challenged, and tested. Thank you for their diligence and success. As a result of their time here, may they be better equipped to lead, serving their nations and benefiting others. Thank you for their instructors and mentors, as well as their families and friends who have encouraged them along the way. And now please be with those being recognized today for their achievements and bless them in their endeavors. By your grace, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All military members, please uncover at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present Rear Admiral Howe, United States Navy, 55th President, United States Naval War College. Well, good morning, everyone. What a great day to gather under the big top here on Dewey Field to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. 
the Naval War College class of 2015, and to formally mark their transition from those intellectually curious students when they began the program to the dedicated professionals in strategy and national security that they represent today. And what a great location to do so. The shores of the Narragansett Bay, cradle of the United States Navy. For over two and a half centuries, American warships have plied the waters here from John Paul Jones' Colonial Navy Sloop Providence to the very latest Aegis destroyers and littoral combat ships. And so it's against this backdrop that we gather to share in a time-honored tradition. Graduations are always festive and colorful events. And today, we'll be combining the beautiful and the meaningful academic robes of our world-class faculty with the starched uniforms and polished brass of our military uniforms, those of the United States military and those of our allies and partners. Nearby on Colbert Plaza, we can see the national flags of our allied officer graduates flying alongside our own stars and stripes. And this long line of national colors is a powerful symbol of the friendships that have been forged here in Newport. Friendships and partnerships that will help maintain peace and secure the, all of our nations in the challenging years ahead. Today, our students will join an unbroken line of Naval War College graduates that extends unbroken back 130 years. A line of leaders that includes Chester Nimitz, Bull Halsey, Raymond Spruance. Through their dedicated efforts and hard work, our students have refined their thinking skills and grown as members of the profession of arms. I have no doubt that historians will one day look back on the class of 2015 and see in it men and women who were well prepared to fight bravely, lead with honor, and make the world a better place. But that intellectual and professional development it didn't just happen solely through the efforts of the students. It's also the result of the efforts of our brilliant and committed faculty and staff. And with me on the dais today are the leaders of that faculty and staff team, and I'd like to introduce them to you. I'd ask you to please hold your applause until they are all standing. Captain Richard LeBranch, the chair of our Joint Military Operations Department. Dr. Michael Pavkovich, Chair of our Strategy and Policy Department. Dr. Jay Hickey, Director of our College of Distance Education. Dr. David Cooper, Chair of our National Security Affairs Department. Professor Tom Kalora, Dean of our Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Professor Tom Mangold, Dean of our International Programs. Rear Admiral Jamie Kelly, Dean of our College of Operational and Strategic Leadership. Dean John Garifano, Dean of our Academic Affairs. And Dr. Lewis Duncan, our distinguished provost. So please help me recognize these leaders and the faculty that they represent. We're also very honored to have with us a number of particularly distinguished guests. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome Admiral Jonathan Greenett, the 30th Chief of Naval Operations, as our guest speaker. I'll have a, a little bit more to say about him in a few minutes, but sir, thank you for joining us today. His Excellency Mohammed Ziaden, the Ambassador of Bangladesh, the Honorable Josh Bolton, former Chief of Staff to the President George W. Bush, Admiral James Hogg, United States Navy retired, former Commander of the Seventh Fleet, the Military Representative to the NATO Committee, and former Director of the CNO Strategic Study Group. 
Admiral Nirmal Verma, the former Chief of Naval Staff for the Indian Navy, the former Ambassador for India to Canada, and now the Chief of Naval Operations Distinguished International Fellow here at the college. Admiral Guillermo Barrera, former head of the Colombian Navy and Distinguished International Fellow now on our faculty. Vice Admiral Weisskopf, United States Navy retired, former president here at the Naval War College and now directing the CNO Strategic Studies Group. Rear Admiral Jim Rendon, United States Coast Guard, who recently assumed duties as the superintendent of the United States Coast Guard Academy. Major General Steve Sider, United States Army Reserve retired, who just this week completed a very successful tour of duty of the, as chairman of the Naval War College Foundation. And I'd particularly like to just take this opportunity to thank all the foundation members here today. You remain that X factor, the turbocharger that allows us that margin of excellence and allows us to move from good to great in our programs. Major General Jim Nuttall, United States Army retired, a guest of one of our graduating students today. The Honorable Jean Marie Napolitano, the mayor of the beautiful city of Newport. Captain Dennis Boyer, the base commander on whose grass we sit today. And many, many distinguished naval and defense attaches from over 25 countries here to recognize their graduates. We also have many family and friends of our graduates as well. Thank you all for being here. Your support was crucial to helping us celebrate the accomplishments we celebrate today. And finally, we recognize the real focus of this ceremony, our students, who are about to return to positions of leadership and significant responsibility in their governments, at headquarters staff, and in charge of our troops. Now, we simply refer to this ceremony as the Naval War College graduation ceremony but it is, in fact, the graduation of five separate colleges. Today, we'll be graduating 192 students from the College of Naval Warfare and the Naval Command College, 232 students from the Naval Command and Staff and Naval Staff College, 1,172 students from our College of Distance Education now don't freak out, they're not all here and they're not all going to cross the stage. <laughs> Most of them obviously can't be here in person, uh, but over a hundred of them are, but they're all here in spirit. And if you add to those numbers, the 147 students that graduated in November and then in March, we total 1,742 students that comprise the class of 2015, the largest class in the college's 130 history. I congratulate you all. Now, our, our college's primary mission is to educate and develop leaders. And in 2013, the United States Navy published its first ever de leader development strategy. It's the first time we ever put down on paper a document that clarified how we think about leader development. And it, that document made explicit the important role of education in doing so. And I think it's very fitting then that our graduation speaker today is the leader that brought that strategy document to fruition, our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greener. Admiral Greenard is a native of Butler, Pennsylvania and graduated from the Naval Academy in 1975. He completed nuclear power studies and went on to serve in our submarine force. With increasing levels of leadership in both our fast attack and our fleet ballistic missile submarines. Command tours included commanding officer of the fast attack submarine USS Honolulu, Commander, Submarine Squadron 11, the Commander of U.S. Naval Forces, Marianas, Commander, U.S. 7th Fleet, and most recently, Commander, U.S. Fleet Forces Command. 
He served as the 36th Vice Chief of Naval Operations for two years and became our 30th Chief of Naval Operations in September 2011. He has been a strong supporter of this institution throughout his career, and we're profoundly grateful that he's with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greener. Thank you, Gardner. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. This is a, what a great, I mean, it's just great to be able to sit outside based on where I come from. And I would like to invite every single one of you to come on down to Washington and sit with us by the Anacostia River and enjoy a, a concert or a change of command or something. And you can use my name anytime you want and say, Greener said I'd come down here in July and August and, and visit with the, on the Anacostia River. And I guarantee you'll get a seat. <laughs> it's great to be here. And I, I'm sitting here. I love hearing the children. Thank you so much, families, for bringing your children here. My kids remember those days. Some are better than others, but that's, what, uh, that's our future out there. We're going to talk about our near-term future. But out here with the families, that is our long-term future. And it's great to have you here. Thank you so much to families for bringing them here. Uh, how about a hand for the Navy Band Northeast? The singer, of course, was awesome. The band has been terrific. Thank you. Thank you to the band. Distinguished guests, I, I won't preclude, I won't go through all of you because uh, these, these graduates want to get going. Their bags are packed. They are ready to go. They want to get on to that next chapter. But for you graduates, I just have a couple of points I want to make before you take off and uh, go change the world, as we like to say. A little bit about your education here at the Naval War College. Why do we do, why is the curricula like it is? Why do we have these departments that uh, Admiral House talked about earlier today and the importance of relationships? You want to get things done in the world we live in today, this rapidly changing, all kind of problems world, from humanitarian assistance, disasters, to fires here and there. It's all about relationships. And in my view, we have the best relationship building institution right here. So this is really, though, our intellectual capital. This is the home of intellectual capital, small case noun, for the United States Navy. We have, and it's, it's not often you can get scholars, historians, students, and practitioners, and we will continue to move more and more practitioners, that is, people that have experience out on the fleet in one place at one time to talk about theory, history, and practice and bring it all together so that we have the right strategy for those of you who will go out and lead and those in the families who will again at some point be our future leaders. This is the home. This place is world renowned. We study war fighting and we apply war fighting here. It is Navy's war gaming center and it is the finest war gaming center in the Department of Defense, I can assure you that because the Deputy Secretary of Defense told me that and so did the Secretary of Defense. So that's not bad. That's not a bad endorsement right there. But the real value of this institution, for those of you graduating, what we want you to do, we're trying to shape how you think. Whether you realize it or not, your experience here has changed you. You won't know it until you go out and operate. I've heard it again and again. I've heard it from department heads, commanding officers out there, Commodores flag officers. I've heard it from other nations. And they say, you know, my time out there in Newport, yeah, it tasted good, the food was good, and all that other stuff. But I remember the relationships that I had and how I think about problems in this rapidly evolving world. You have learned how to question assumptions, develop and articulate arguments, defend a position that you may not have thought right up front. That's my position. But you know what? That's the consensus position, and you have to learn how to defend it. You will draw lessons from history, you've done that, and you will formulate and weigh courses of action. It's easy to develop courses of action. I get them all the time. Somebody has to make a decision sometime. We're going this way, and you have to then describe, so how do we move ahead from here? The experience and the insight you gain here is going to prepare you for the problems of tomorrow, and it's going to be an uncertain tomorrow. For example, you're going to have to figure out how to innovate. That's pretty cool. Innovation is really cool. But then you've got to go integrate the innovation. Well, that's a little harder. 
Trust me, it's very hard. That's what you'll have to do. You'll be, in, be big in electromagnetics, in cyber, unmanned systems, and directed energy. That's where our Navy is going. That's where I think our Defense Department is going as well. You'll be into disruptive technologies that we haven't even conceived, and it'll be up to you to address the challenges and figure out, how I like to say, how do we get this stuff wet? How do we get it out there, out of the lab, looks good in the lab, looks good out there in the field where we demonstrate it, but you gotta take it out there and do it right. So this education, the good news is, it comes with a lifetime warranty. You can stay in touch with your professors and your faculty, and I highly recommend that you do. These folks help shape your military thought and how you pull together leadership and lessons and disparate facts and pull them together to something that is coherent. Stay in touch with them. The institution will be here for you, and you will continue to contribute to this institution's strategic enterprise. You offer perspective and constructive criticisms. I ask you to get out there and write. Talking is good. That's always good. And you can give your opinion by the water cooler or wherever you hang out. I'd like you to write down your thoughts. That's a little different. Put it down, stand up for it, and be bold in that regard. That's how we get deliberation. That's how we get debate, and that's how we can make a well-balanced decision. A little bit about relationships. This Newport experience is more than a school, as I've mentioned. It's a melting pot of operational talent that we have. Look at the student body, and it's amazing to stand up here and see different services, different agencies, different nations, all together. And as I said, that's how we're gonna get through this future out there. It's gonna be coalitions, standing coalitions, ad hoc coalitions. People willing to say, you know, I don't, believe, I don't agree with everything you do, but this problem has to be resolved one way, and we understand what that is. And heaven help, if, help us if it's a disaster, a large airline going down, a tsunami, a, a volcano, you name it, we all have to pull together quickly. You're a gathering of professionals, a diverse group for sure, with different viewpoints. But after, over the last year, I've seen it. I've seen some of you come down to Washington and hang out while you even dance together. And, and you're right, we left all the photos down there. It's locked in the vault. But you learn from each other. You meet future partners. And I can't, I mean, if you remember one thing I say, these are your future partners. Keep those addresses, emails, whatever means to contact, because things get done by phone calls, things get done by emails today. Things don't get done by some formalized way that things put together. It just doesn't work that way. You are strengthening a connective tissue in what I call a global network of navies. Now, it can extend beyond navies, but a global network of navies that will be vital for the future, for freedom of navigation. This place is inter-service, inter-agency, and international, and it's got a long history of cross-pollination. We had an Army officer on, this, on the faculty in 1825 named Lieutenant Bliss, and in 1901 became the first commandant of the Army War College. So we share. The international op officers have been here since 1894. The first was a Swedish officer. We have 63 different nations here, 64 if you include the United States, forging bonds. You will be partners that are critical to the futures, as I've mentioned, nurture the, the friendships, and during the crises, you'll have somebody that you can depend on. I think you've learned today, or during this period of time, I should say, who can you take risk with? Who can you trust? Who can you look in the eye, listen to them, and say they may come from a different country, they may have slightly different approaches to politics, but I think I can trust this person. You're gonna have to figure that out when you're a leader in the future. So your time invested here will pay you dividends throughout your career. Thanks again to the families. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being the producers and the directors of the leadership that I have out here in front of me, we have out here in front of me. You are the wind underneath their wings if they're going anywhere. Make no mistake about it. And by the way, remind them of that today when they start holding things up and say, ain't I great? <clears throat> so graduates, good luck. I'll see you out there in the fleet. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen.
Admiral Greenett, thanks very much for uh, your comments, again, for your presence here today. More importantly, perhaps, your enduring support for the institution and your leadership of our Navy. Now, in my capacity as the president of the Naval War College, uh, I am empowered to award academic recognition to scholars and to practitioners who demonstrate outstanding judgment and ability in command and staff positions, who have studied and analyzed complex issues related to national security, and who have led with strength and with integrity. Sir, your life of unparalleled public support and commitment to the War College, the Navy, and the nation amply demonstrates you are such a leader. And it's my pleasure to represent the Navy and the broader Naval War College community in presenting you with an honorary degree of Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. In addition to awards presented at yesterday's recognition ceremony, academic awards will now be presented to selected students who have distinguished themselves by their academic achievement. In some instances, there are individuals receiving honorable mention for their work and they will have their names read aloud. Individuals receiving an honorable mention will stand and be recognized in their place. The first place awardees will then be announced and invited to the stage for formal recognition. The Robert E. Bateman's International Prize is presented for the best paper submitted by a Naval Command College student on a topic related to force planning or strategic issues of maritime interest. The cash prize is provided by the Naval War College Foundation through the generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Robert E. Batemans. Mrs. Hope Van Buren, Naval War College trustee, will present the award. I will first announce the individuals, individuals receiving honorable mention and then announce the first place awardee and invite that person to join us on stage for formal recognition. Honorable mentions go to Commander Michelle Doof, Senegalese Navy, 2015 Naval Command College. and Commander Chung Wa Moon, Republic of Korea Navy, 2015 Naval Command College. The Robert E. Bateman's International Prize, first prize goes to Commander Paul J. O'Grady, Oriole Australian Navy, 2015 Naval Command College. His essay is entitled, Opportunities to Enhance Enabling Capabilities for Expanded Port Infrastructure in Myanmar, Indirect Approaches for the U.S. and International Partners. For every resident student present here today, there are eight other students located around the globe engaged in the Naval War College's distance education programs. This year, there are 1,172 graduates of the College of Distance Education, of whom 108 are with us today. Distance education is a unique challenge in that the student completes his or her education while engaged in their full-time day job, thus requiring special initiative and dedication. It is with a profound sense of camaraderie and appreciation for their efforts that we salute our distance education students. The McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Education 
is sponsored by Captain D. Robert McGinnis, United States Navy Reserve, retired, a Naval War College Foundation trustee. A cash award, it recognizes the Fleet Seminar Program graduate of the College of Distance Education who displays superior standards of academic performance, professionalism, and community service. Mr. John Odegaard, Executive Director, Naval War College Foundation, will present the award. The winner of the McGinnis Family Award for Outstanding Performance in Non-Resident Education is Captain George M. Lamb, United States Marine Corps, June 2015, College of Distance Education. The Zimmerman Gray International Award. The Zimmerman Gray International Essay Award is awarded for the best of all papers submitted by a student in the Naval Staff College. Selection is made by the President, Naval War College, based on the recommendations of a prize essay committee. The award consists of a perpetual plaque displayed at the Naval War College bearing the winner's name. Recipients of the award are also given an inscribed certificate documenting their accomplishments along with a cash prize provided through the generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Jilson Gray and the Naval War College Foundation. The award is named in honor of their fathers, Commander Donald Zimmerman, United States Navy, and Commander Jilson B. Gray, Jr., United States Navy, both career naval aviators who saw combat duty during World War II. Mr. Jilson Gray and his daughter, Ms. Catherine Gray, will present this award. Honorable mentions go to Lieutenant Commander Yotaro Isui, Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force, June 2015, Naval Staff College. And Lieutenant Commander Tasuku Kawanami, Japanese Self-Defense Force. The Zimmerman Gray International Award First Prize is awarded to Lieutenant Commander Deepak Bali, Indian Navy, June 2015, Naval Staff College. His essay is entitled Strategic Implications of Juxtapos Juxtaposing India's Act East Policy and U.S. Pivot to Asia Pacific. The Navy League Awards. Each year, the Navy League of the United States presents two awards, one to a graduate of the College of Naval Warfare and one to a graduate of the College of, of Naval Command and Staff. These awards are given in memory of Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce and Admiral William S. Sims, respectively. Admiral Luce was the first president of the Naval War College, and Admiral Sims was president of the Naval War College at two points in his distinguished career. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievements, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of armed and government services in the public interest. 
Mr. Thomas Feeney, President of the Navy League of the United States, Newport County Council, will present the awards. The Stephen B. Luce Award for the Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Warfare is presented to Lieutenant Colonel Cameron Pringle, U.S. Air Force, College of Naval Warfare, Class of 2015. The William S. Sims Award for Distinguished Graduate of the College of Naval Command and Staff is presented to Lieutenant Commander Dan Post, U.S. Navy, College of Naval Command and Staff, Class of 2015. Professor William Spain, would you please come forward and join Admiral Howe? <laughs> Professor Spain, the president of the Naval War College, takes pleasure in appointing William R. Spain as Associate Provost Emeritus. In recognition of your dedicated service to the U.S. Naval War College as a professor, Associate Dean of Academics, and Associate Provost, it's my pleasure to confirm your appointment as Associate Provost Emeritus with all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. Effective on, this date of your effective on the date of your retirement, given this 19th date of June, 2015. Signed, P. Gardner Howe III, President, U.S. Naval War College. Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the presentation of graduates. Ramah Howe, please proceed to the podium. Captain Perry Yaw, United States Navy, Director, Naval Command College, will present the Naval Command College. Naval Command College Class of 2015, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the Naval Command College Class of 2015 candidates for the United States Navy War College Diploma. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. I confer upon you the United States Naval War College Diploma with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Naval Command College, please be seated. <laughs> College of Naval Warfare, Class of 2015, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the College of Naval Warfare Class of 2015 candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. And by the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy and the accreditation of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in National Security 
and Strategic Studies. College of Naval Warfare, please be seated. Captain Mark Turner, United States Navy, Director of the Naval Staff College, will present the Naval Staff College. Naval Staff College, Class 2015, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the Naval Staff College, Class 2015 candidates for the United States Naval War College Diploma. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. And I confer upon you the United States Naval War College Diploma with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Naval Staff College. <laughs> Naval Staff College, Class 2015, please be seated. College of Naval Command and Staff, Class of 2015, please rise. Admiral Howe, <laughs> I have the honor to present the College of Naval Command and Staff Class of 2015, candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy and the accreditation of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. College of Naval Command and Staff, please be seated. Professor Walt Wildeman will present the College of Distance Education. Master's degree candidates of the College of Distance Education, class of 2015, please rise. Wow. Admiral Howe. I have the honor to present the College of Distance Education Class of 2015 candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy and the accreditation of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, I confer upon you a degree of Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies. <laughs> Master's degree candidates of the College of Distance Education, please be seated. Diploma candidates of the College of Distance Education, class of 2015, please rise. Admiral Howe, I have the honor to present the College of Distance Education Class of 2015 candidates for the United States Naval War College Diploma. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. And I confer upon you the United States Naval War College Diploma with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Diploma candidates of the College of Distance Education, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me once again in saluting with our applause the graduates of the United States Naval War College, class of 2015, and their families. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. A diploma with highest distinction 
is presented to the top 5% of each graduating class. A diploma with distinction is presented to the next 15% of each graduating class. Graduates will proceed to the stage as their name is read. Please hold your applause until all names have been read so that all names and recognition may be heard. From the College of Naval Warfare, Class of 2015, Lieutenant Colonel Mona Aaron Alexander, U.S. Air Force. From the Naval Command College, Class of 2015, Lieutenant Colonel Sid Ahmed Hashemane, the Algerian Naval Forces. Lieutenant Commander John Joseph Andrew, U.S. Navy. Mr. Sun W. Bai, Department of Defense. Captain Claudio Javier Villamide, Argentine Navy. Colonel Timothy D. Bailey, U.S. Air Force. Commander Paul James O'Grady, Royal Australian Navy. Colonel David M. Bedard, U.S. Army. Captain Syed Mohammed Manarizaman, Bangladesh Navy. Mrs. Meredith C. Bedenbaugh Thomas, Department of Veteran Affairs. Captain Andre da Costa, Brazilian Navy. Lieutenant Commander Edward P. Bertucci, U.S. Navy. Captain Velko Velkov, Bulgarian Navy. Colonel William H. Besterman III, U.S. Army. Captain Christopher Robinson, Royal Canadian Navy. Commander Amber D. Biles, U.S. Navy, Medical Service Corps. Commander Rodrigo Arancibia Pascal, Chilean Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan C. Byram, U.S. Army, with distinction. Commander Miguel Cordoba Garcia, Colombian Navy. Colonel Thomas R. Boland, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Alan Begava, Croatian Navy. Lieutenant Commander Andrew M. Kane, U.S. Navy. Captain Ahmed Hassan Fazi, Egyptian Navy. Colonel Lance K. Calvert, U.S. Army, with distinction. Commander Yuha Miko Ravante, Finnish Navy. Lieutenant Commander Juan L. Carrasco, U.S. Navy. Commander Mark Moreau, French Navy. Mr. Sean Grant Klontz, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Commander Lazar Mosuvu Nazamba, Gabon Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Eric D. Cloutier, U.S. Marine Corps. Commander Christoph Otto Siliax, German Navy. Colonel Matthew J. Cody, U.S. Army, with distinction. Commander Georgios Kirikopoulos, Hellenic Navy. And that was Lieutenant Colonel Jason J. Cockrum, U.S. Air Force. Captain Gaurav Mehta, Indian Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Jason W. Costello, U.S. Air Force, high distinction. Captain I. Putu Anga Sordika, Indonesian Navy. Miss Annie B. Crum, U.S. Special Operations Command. Commander Omer Segev, Israeli Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Robert R. D'Alto, Air National Guard. Captain Stefano Barbieri, Italian Navy. Colonel Frank Gerald Davis II, U.S. Army. Captain Toshiyuki Harada, Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. Colonel Kwesi L. Davis, U.S. Army. Colonel Abdekader Almarale, Royal Jordanian Naval Forces. Colonel Robert B. Davis, U.S. Army. Commander Changhua Moon, Republic of Korea Navy. Commander Timothy P. Davis II, U.S. Navy. Commander Walid Sabti, Kuwait Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian R. Denman, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Haisam Danawi, Lebanese Naval Forces. Colonel Michael C. DeRozier, U.S. Army, with distinction. Commander Svayunas Bandevichias, Lithuanian Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Gerald A. Donahue, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Commander Maud Norizal Farudin, Royal Malaysian Navy. Commander Keith B. Dowling, U.S. Navy. Commander Mohamedou Abdurmohani, Mauritanian Navy. Colonel Nathan J. Elliott, U.S. Air Force. Commander Cesar Octavio Larraza Vega, Mexican Navy. Commander Eric M. Emery, U.S. Navy. 
Commander Abdul Kareem Zaim, Royal Moroccan Navy. Lieutenant Commander Vincent V. Erno, U.S. Navy, Supply Corps. Commander Egbert Vonk, Royal Netherlands Navy. Commander David James Fanley, U.S. Navy. Captain Clement Egbinta Atebi, Nigerian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Mark R. Ferrier, U.S. Army. Commander Senior Grade Egil Vastrand, Royal Norwegian Navy. Mr. Glenn E. Fetzer, Department of State. Commander Saeed Ali Abdullah Awali, Royal Navy of Oman. Ms. Kim Suzanne Fletcher, Headquarters, NORAD Northcom. Captain Junaid Mahfouz, Pakistan Navy. Ms. Ginger Marie Floria, Office of Director of National Intelligence. Captain Jose de Jesus Rodriguez, Panamanian Air Naval Service. Commander Brandon D. Floyd, U.S. Navy. Captain Luis Del Carpio, Peruvian Navy. Commander Tonry M. Ford, U.S. Navy. Captain Dorvin Jose Legaspi, Philippine Navy. Captain Gregory Fuller, U.S. Coast Guard, with distinction. Commander Darius Wignerak, Polish Special Operations Forces. Commander John Paul Garska, U.S. Navy. Captain Cornell Eugen Kojakaru, Romanian Naval Forces. Mr. Jeremy R. Gauthier, Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Captain Fahad Mohammed Alataibi, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Lieutenant Commander Richard E. Green III, U.S. Navy. Commander Michel Duf, Senegalese Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Gregory C. Griffin, U.S. Army. Captain Musa Wenkosi Nikomonde, South African Navy. Mr. Gregory S. Groth, Department of State. Captain Manuel Angel Martinez Nunez, Spanish Navy. Mr. Daniel E. Gundred, Office of Naval Intelligence. Commander Junwoo Su, Taiwan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph E. Guzman, U.S. Army. Commander Karim Taga, Tunisian Navy. Colonel Richard T. Haggerty, U.S. Army, highest distinction. Staff Colonel Abdallah Yusuf Alhamadi, United Arab Emirates Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey D. Hansen, U.S. Marine Corps. Commander Paul Russell, Royal Navy. Captain Benjamin J. Hawkins, U.S. Coast Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Brad Oliver, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Nathan C. Henderson, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Commander Hugh Winkle, United States Navy. Ms. Elisa Catherine Hens, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Colonel Samir Rodman Ali Al Kubadi, Yemen Naval Forces. Captain Jerome A. Henson, U.S. Navy, Chaplain Corps, with distinction. Graduating from the Naval Staff College, Class 2015, Lieutenant Imad Mezzanini, Algerian Naval Forces. Captain Douglas P. Howe, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Murad Zanali, Azerbaijan Naval Forces. Colonel Christopher A. Hussein, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Mufukarul Sharif, Bangladesh Navy. Lieutenant Commander Bruce S. Iverson, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Wenceslas Bagidi, Benin Navy. Mr. Jeffrey Robert Izo, Department of State, with distinction. Commander Mauricio Pinto, Brazilian Navy. Mr. Brandon L. Jones, Department of State. Lieutenant Dobrin Vasilev, Bulgarian Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Dick Joyce, U.S. Marine Corps, highest distinction, number one in his class. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Patrick Nanan Mabiam, Cameroon Navy. <laughs> Commander Christian Curtin, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Nevin Pekovic, Croatian Navy. Commander Tom Kiefer, U.S. Navy. Commander Mahmoud Dieb, Egyptian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Keener, Air National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Leonel Castillo, Naval Forces of El Salvador. Ms. Kimberly C. Kelly, Department of State, with distinction. 
Lieutenant Commander Yannick Nahr, Estonian Navy. Colonel Joseph T. Kimmer, Jr., U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Deepak Bali, Indian Navy. Commander John M. Kreischer, U.S. Coast Guard. Commandant Junior Grade, Paratosh Pathak, Indian Coast Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy P. Cayune, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Afif Putera, Indonesian Navy. Colonel Scott R. Lamprides, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Guru Udanto, Indonesian Navy. Colonel Michael M. Larson, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Ron Steigman, Israeli Naval Force. Commander John E. Larson, Jr., U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Tsuku Kuanami, Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. Colonel Douglas A. Levien, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Yotaro Usui, Japan, Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Colonel Peter S. Lavola, U.S. Army. Major Omar Oladot, Royal Jordanian Naval Force. Commander Jan M. Lewandowski, U.S. Navy, Nurse Corps. Lieutenant Commander J. Young Kim, Republic of Korea Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew E. Limbert, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Park Ki Young Wan, Republic of Korea Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan A. Link, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Ayman Alawadi, Kuwait, Kuwait Naval Force. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Michael J. Livingston, U.S. Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Arez, Kuwait Naval Force. Colonel Shane Daniel Lohman, U.S. Air Force Reserve. Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Al Shalal, Kuwait Naval Force. Mr. Glenn W. McDonald, Department of Veterans Affairs. Major Mashari Al Thukib, Kuwait Army. Mr. Derek A. Mahan, U.S. Senior Defense Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Commander Chris, Chris Libs, Latvia Navy. Mr. Alan C. Marble, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Colonel Tariq Farage, Lebanese Navy. Lieutenant Colonel George W. Market the Fifth, Market the Fifth, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Remy Zabela, Lithuanian Navy. Colonel Stephen M. Marks, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Ahmed Nasri, Royal Malaysian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Michael D. McGregor, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Hector Cortez, Mexican Navy. Miss Melanie J. McGuire, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Commander Igor Vushechic, Montenegrin Navy. Lieutenant Colonel David M. McAleese, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Arabia Rabi, Royal Moroccan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Keith A. McKinley, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Andrew Zidon, Nigerian Navy. Commander John L. Melton, U.S. Navy, Medical Service Corps. Lieutenant Commander Daniel Thomason, Royal Norwegian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel A. Joel Myers, U.S. Air Force. Commander Saleh al Kazmi, Royal Navy of Oman. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Brian Merrill, U.S. Army, Nas US Army National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Talal Azaabi, Royal Navy of Oman. Commander Gregory J. Milosic, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Humayun, Awan, Pakistan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian W. Mullery, U.S. Marine Corps.
Major Juan Jose Guerrera, Panamanian National Air Naval Service. Mr. Brendan Michael Murray, Department of State, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Roy Dromingi, Papua New Guinea Defense Force Maritime Element. Colonel Kelly A. Murray, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Nelson Pinsas, Peruvian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Robert J. Neely, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Peter Joskura, Polish Navy. Colonel Demetrius J. Nicholson, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Sebastian Burote, Romanian Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Terry Postenbaugh, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Hamilton D'Souza, San Tome and Principe Coast Guard. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Robert K. Pukarek, U.S. Air Force. Major Saad Alali, Royal Saudi Air Defense Forces. Commander William G. Perdue, U.S. Navy, Judge Advocate General Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Talal Alasaf, Royal Saudi Land Forces. Ms. Usha E. Pitts, Department of State. Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Amulhim, Royal Saudi Air Force. Commander Lynn J. Primo, U.S. Navy, Supply Corps. Commander Ibrahim al Sadon, Royal Saudi Naval Forces. Lieutenant Colonel Cameron Pringle, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Jules Endur, Senegalese Navy. Lieutenant Commander James R. Prouty, U.S. Navy. Major Jonathan Lim, Republic of Singapore Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Randolph G. Pugh, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Hendrik Navoa, South African Navy. Mr. Irving Keyless, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program. Lieutenant Commander Sei Yen Chang, Taiwan Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Sean A. Raisman, U.S. Air Force. Major Ali Lubombo, Tanzanian Navy. Commander Pamela Sue Rawi, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Dion Brothwaite, Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Aaron W. Reisinger, U.S. Army, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Murad Thwebe, Tunisian Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Francisco Rivera, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Osman Ghul, Turkish Naval Forces. Mr. Christopher Joseph Rawlins, Defense Logistics Agency. Major Nazar al Tanigi, United Arab Emirates Naval Forces. Commander Ryan Reagan Roop, U.S. Navy, Chaplain Corps. Lieutenant Commander Ryan Karstens, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel James A. Ryan II, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Stephen Moore, United States Navy. M Mr. David J. Saren, U.S. Special Operations Command. Lieutenant Commander Rebecca Rubarich, United States Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Richard J. Smith, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Richard Seeley, United States Navy. Commander Ronald L. Schoonover, U.S. Navy, Medical Service Corps. Lieutenant Commander Peter Seguin, United States Navy. Ms. Jewel Ann Scott, Defense Senior Leadership Development Program, with distinction. Lieutenant Lay Duck Ton, Vietnam People's Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jason Emanuel Sire, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Khan Von Wen, Vietnam People's Army. Commander William K. Shoffley III, U.S. Navy.
Lieutenant Commander Mohammed Al Kopsi, Yemen Navy. Colonel Jeremy T. Segrist, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Sadek Al Sharabi, Yemen Coast Guard. Colonel Gary Eugene Spiro, U.S. Army. From the College of Maritime Advanced Warfare Studies. Lieutenant Commander Dominic Albano, U.S. Navy. Commander Jason C. Stapleton, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander John C. Benke, United States Navy. Colonel J. L. Stewart, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Thomas Donald Belchick, Jr., United States Navy. Commander Joel R. Strauss, U.S. Naval, Navy, Civil Engineering Corps. Lieutenant Commander Daniel E. Brown, United States Navy. Ms. Junan H. Swoops, Defense Intelligence Agency. Graduating with distinction, Major Arthur Q. Bruggeman, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Tiernan, U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. Major Eric A. Cahill, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Vasega Tilo, Jr., U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Coleman C. Chandler, Jr., United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Robert C. Tryon, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Kevin D. Clarita, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Vincent Ucardi, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Lori L. Cody, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Mark E. Van Skyke, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Derek W. Corbett, United States Navy. Captain Jason Allen Welsh, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Major Lisa M. Corley, United States Air Force. Mr. Frank T. Wells, Military Sea Lift Command. Lieutenant Ryan Patrick DePaulo, United States Navy. Colonel Deborah L. Whitmer, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Rustin James Dozeman, United States Navy. Colonel Michael A. Zaroslik, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Eric M. Etherton, United States Navy. And now, from the College of Naval Command and Staff, Major Lane M. Aldinger, U.S. Army. Ms. Ricks Hawk, Defense Intelligence Agency. Major Christopher Alley, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Anthony Wayne Holmes, Defense Intelligence Agency. Lieutenant Commander Ben L. Anderson, U.S. Navy. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Robert D. Holt, United States Navy. Major Lucas R. Anderson, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Catherine A. Hutter, United States Navy. Major Thomas D. Angstadt, U.S. Army, with distinction. Graduating with distinction, Major Matthew R. Johnston, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Todd M. Bainey, U.S. Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Kevin Sean McCormick, Jr., United States Navy. Major David W. Bergeron, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Chester A. Morgan, United States Navy. Major Edwin Heritage Bodenheim, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander David J. Maul, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Peter N. Boris, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Matthew W. Noland, United States Navy. Major John Bouton, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Timothy L. Osborne, United States Navy. Major Zachary A. Briscoe, U.S. Army. Major Levi A. Rains, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Peter Maxwell Bugler, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Justin M. Sprague, U.S. Navy. Major Patrick D. Kane, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Patrick E. Stacy, United States Navy. 
Lieutenant Commander Joseph J. Capalbo III, U.S. Navy. Graduating with distinction, Major Kevin J. Stepp, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Jeremy L. Carlson, U.S. Navy. Graduating with distinction, Major Randon L. Storms II, United States Air Force. Lieutenant Jeremy Keith Carroll, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Tin T. Tron, United States Navy. Mr. Adam A. Chavez, Defense Intelligence Agency. Lieutenant Commander Anthony R. Uneski, Jr., United States Navy. Major Aaron W. Childers, U.S. Army. Lieutenant George Andrew Wilkening, United States Navy. Major Lonnie S. Christian, Jr., U.S. Marine Corps. Graduating with distinction, Major Francisco Xavier Zavala, United States Marine Corps. Major Jason A. Coates, U.S. Army, with distinction. From the College of Distance Education, graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Jason P. Brand, United States Coast Guard. Major Brett W. Cochran, U.S. Air Force. Ms. Jennifer L. Brigham, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Dallas, Texas. Ms. Sarah L. Coffin, Defense Intelligence Agency. Mr. James M. Brock, Jr., Air Force Materiel Command, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Major Brian E. Connolly, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Grant D. Brusky, United States Navy. Mr. Aaron Devay, Department of State. Lieutenant Commander Herbert Fletcher Cord, the third, United States Public Health Service. Major Nicholas Reed Drury, U.S. Army. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant James S. Daffer, United States Coast Guard. Major Wayne Emer, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Edward Dombach II, United States Navy. Major Jonathan P. Emery, U.S. Army. Commander Ronald J. Garrett, United States Public Health Service. Mr. James H. Fall IV, Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Mr. Ronald S. Gennaro, United States Army Tank and Armaments Command, Warren, Michigan. Lieutenant Commander Frank J. Florio, U.S. Coast Guard. Ms. Jerry M. Ghosh, Air Force Materiel Command, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Major Christopher L. Galuli, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Christopher L. Herrera, Supply Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Mr. Simon R. Goldfine, Department of State, with highest distinction. Commander Jimmy T. Landrum, Sr., United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Michael R. Gearhart, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Isaac D. Mayhar, United States Coast Guard, graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Boyce, C. Boyce R. Geyer, U.S. Navy, Medical Service Corps. Commander Mauricio E. Morales, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Mrs. Jacqueline A. Grimes. Lieutenant Thomar A. Rosarda, United States Navy. Major Robert E. Grimmett III, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Robert B. Scaife, Department of the Army, Europe. Lieutenant Commander Jake L. Half IV, U.S. Navy. Ms. Kristen D. Schweikler, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major David Michael Hall, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction, number one in his class. <laughs> Mr. Major. Vincent Srip Sriptapan, Department of Homeland Security, Washington, D.C. Major Bradley C. Hamrick, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Jennifer C. Wong, U.S. Coast Guard. 
Lieutenant Jason R. Haney, U.S. Navy. Captain Angela S. Zunick, United States Marine Corps. Major Dustin M. Hart, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel William M. Anderson, United States Army National Guard. Major Mark P. Hayes, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Stacy J. Auger, United States Navy. Major Christopher T. Herman, U.S. Marine Corps Reserve. Lieutenant Christopher A. Baxter, United States Navy Reserve. Major Kevin Dean Hickok, U.S. Air Force, with highest distinction. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Scott P. Benny, United States Navy Reserve. Mr. Todd Michael Hiller, Maritime Administration. Lieutenant Matthew G. Berthold, United States Navy. Major Ramsey M. Horn, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Graduating with highest distinction, Lieutenant Colonel Samuel W. Betwee, United States Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Susan T. Hubner, U.S. Navy. Graduating with distinction, Mr. Robert H. Bills, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Dahlgren, Virginia. Lieutenant Commander Eric Dean Hutter, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Major Gerald E. Bolden, United States Army. Lieutenant Kevin Daniel Jack, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Gabriel K. Bradley, JAG Corps, United States Navy, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Jeffrey B. Jenkins, U.S. Navy, Chaplain Corps, with highest distinction. Mr. Jonathan A. Brown, United States Secret Service, Washington, D.C. Mr. Jeremiah L. Jones, Department of Homeland Security. Lieutenant Elizabeth K. Buff, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Major Jeffrey M. Kane, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Samuel T. Bunville, United States Navy Reserve. Major Brian D. LaPointe, U.S. Marine Corps. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Lindsey A. Carter, United States Navy. Commander Jeffrey D. Latham, U.S. Navy. Mr. Joseph E. Clark, Naval Air Systems Command, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Major Derek Lucarelli, U.S. Army. Mr. Robert C. Clark, Headquarters, United States Marine Corps. Major Joseph L. Magwadug, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Roberto Concepcion, United States Coast Guard. Major Jean Ma Matthew Manor, U.S. Air Force. Graduating with distinction, Commander Richard K. Constantian, Jr., United States Navy. Major Kelly Lee Hart Markin, U.S. Army, with dis Kelly Lynn He Markin, U.S. Army, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Diana I. Dalfonts, Supply Corps, United States Navy. Mr. Timothy R. McGeehan, Maritime Administration. Lieutenant Commander Darren E. Denyer, United States Navy Reserve. Major Wilson R. McGraw, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander James Jamer R. Doughty, United States Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander James Michael McLay, U.S. Coast Guard, with distinction. Ms. Megan S. Dressel, United States Secret Service, Washington, D.C. Major Dax R. McClendon, U.S. Marine Corps. Mr. Mark P. Embry, Drug Enforcement Administration, Tampa, Florida. Lieutenant Commander Caitlin M. McLeod, U.S. Navy. Mr. Julius L. Evans, Naval Medical Logistics Command, Fort Detrick, Maryland. Major John D. McRae, U.S. Army National Guard. Mr. Stephen Faber, National Oceanographic Office, Stennis Space Center, Mississippi. Mr. Thomas Michael Kane Metter, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Graduating with highest distinction, Mr. Saul Fields, 
Naval Special Warfare Group 11, Coronado, California. Lieutenant Commander Rudy D. Medina, U.S. Navy, Medical Service Corps. Mr. Larry R. Fish, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C., graduating with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Paul Meyer, U.S. Navy. Also graduating with distinction, Mr. Liam Fitzsimmons, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major Aaron Milroy, U.S. Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Carmelita S. Fleming, United States Navy Reserve. Major Edwin Lester Mingus III, U.S. Army. Graduating with distinction, Mr. John Spencer Feebairn, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Michael R. Montoya, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Stephen Fuentes, Civil Engineering Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Samuel Lee Moreland, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Stephen N. Gengler, United States Navy. Major David W. Myrick, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Natalia C. Henriquez, Medical Service Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Duck Huey Nguyen, U.S. Navy, Civil Engineering Corps. Civil Engineering Corps. Lieutenant William C. Hinson, United States Navy. Major Min Nguyen, U.S. Army. Mr. Joshua S. Hodges, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Daniel John Oberlander, Jr., U.S. Navy Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Robin L. Holston, United States Navy. Major Stephen K. Olmeyer, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Richland C. Ivey, United States Navy. Major Michael Andrew Pachuki, U.S. Army. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Benjamin A. Jancic, United States Coast Guard. Major Michael Andrew Pierce, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Brenna S. Johnson, United States Navy Reserve. Major Nicholas R. Peterson, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Mr. Sean P. Joyce, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Commander Robert William Peters III, U.S. Navy, Chaplain Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Jeffrey R. Krilla, United States Navy Reserve. Major Brandon M. Petrick, U.S. Army. Graduating with highest distinction, Captain George M. Lamb, United States Marine Corps. Major Jonathan Edward Fender, U.S. Army. <laughs> Mr. Timothy M. Leah, United States Secret Service, Washington, D.C. Major Stephen P. Pierce, Air National Guard. Ms. Sarah Ann M. Lomansky, United States Agency for International Development, Washington, D.C. Major Michael Pigford, U.S. Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Nicole L. Lobecker, United States Navy. Major Winfield Scott Pinkstaff, U.S. Army. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Jocelyn E. Loftus Williams, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander Daniel R. Post, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Ms. Amy L. Luce, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Dallas, Texas. Major Kurt A. Pryor, U.S. Army. Mr. Andrew C. Lund, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major Michael Angelo Renato, U.S. Army. Mr. Edward J. Lunny, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Dahlgren, Virginia. Major Jeffrey Regan, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Eric H. Maddox, Naval Criminal Investigative Service, Washington, D.C. Major Sean A. Rickroad, U.S. Marine Corps. Ms. Nora C. McArdle, Department of State, Washington, D.C. Major Nicholas S. Ringler, U.S. Army. Mr. Christopher M. McIntyre, United States Secret Service, Washington, D.C., graduating with distinction. 
Major Richard H. Robinson III, U.S. Marine Corps, with distinction. Our own chief in charge of electives, Mrs. Donna K. Menard, Naval War College, Newport, Rhode Island. Major Lawrence A. Rubel, U.S. Army. Commander Kenneth M. Monahan, United States Public Health Service. Major Julie A. Rudy, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Mr. David F. Moore, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Port Wenamee, California, graduating with distinction. Mrs. Barbara S. Runnels, Defense Contract Management Agency. Commander Christopher L. Morgan, Sr., Supply Corps, United States Navy Reserve. Major Charles Sandusky, U.S. Air Force. Mr. Arthur R. Muhire, United States Agency for International Development, Washington, D.C. Major Matthew R. Sheftick, U.S. Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Robert G. Myers, United States Navy. Major Mark E. Schumann, U.S. Army. Commander Prince A. Neal, United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Commander Brian Allen Luke Smickless, U.S. Coast Guard. Lieutenant Eric D. Nielsen, United States Coast Guard. Major Thomas Eric Sani, Jr., U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Harold L. North III, United States Navy. Mr. Carl T. Sparacino, with highest distinction. Graduating with highest distinction, Captain Kevin M. O'Day, United States Coast Guard, retired. Major Ryan L. Stallsworth, U.S. Air Force, with distinction. Lieutenant Daniel J. O'Neill, United States Navy. Major Scott J. Stevens, U.S. Army. <laughs> Mr. Bermel R. Paz, Department of Justice, Washington, D.C. Mr. Jonas Damian Stewart, Department of State, with highest distinction. Mr. Brian D. Pegram, Government Accountability Office, Washington, D.C. Major David M. Stroud, U.S. Army. Graduating with distinction, Lieutenant Commander Jeffrey D. Pizzanti, United States Navy Reserve. Major Edward Paul Strakowski, U.S. Army. Captain Jaime A. Quejada, Dental Corps, United States Navy Reserve, graduating with distinction. Major Jimmy Ta, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Tracy L. Reynolds, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Major Eric W. Thompson, U.S. Air Force. Lieutenant Commander Kara A. Riceborough, United States Navy Reserve. Major Lawrence Torres, U.S. Army. Captain Christopher D. Rodriguez, United States Marine Corps. Lieutenant Commander Warren Van Allen, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Commander Cameron M. Roundtree, United States Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander James E. Vick, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Emily A. Salvia, United States Navy. Major Michael, Michael Wallet, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Drew Schaefer, Judge Advocate General Corps, United States Navy. Major William T. Walsh, U.S. Marine Corps. Mr. Scott B. Schiller, United States House of Representatives, Washington, D.C. Major Lizette G. Welsh, U.S. Marine Corps. Mr. Jeffrey E. Cinnamon, Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Newport, Rhode Island. Major Scott Freeman Welsh, U.S. Marine Corps. Lieutenant Arwin B. South, United States Navy. Major Randy Dean White, U.S. Marine Corps. Graduating with distinction, Mr. Jonathan R. Staley, Jr., Mitre Corporation, McLean, Virginia. Major Thomas A. Whitehead, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Ann M. Stalin, United States Navy. 
Lieutenant Commander John Randall Wilkinson, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Andrew P. Thompson, United States Navy. Major Michael S. Williams, U.S. Army, with distinction. Mr. Greg A. Van Lenten, Department of Defense. Lieutenant Commander Jason A. Wilhide, United States Navy Reserve. Ms. Elaine B. Wilson, United States Senate, Washington, D.C. Lieutenant Edward R. Wright, United States Navy. Lieutenant Commander James A. Lodzinski, Supply Corps, United States Navy Reserve. And Captain Brett Friedman, United States Marine Corps. Rear Admiral Howe will now deliver his final charge to the graduates. So it's now my honor to close these proceedings. Again, Admiral Greener, thanks for your thoughtful remarks, enduring support of the institution and being here today. To the Naval War College faculty and staff, today we again witness the results of your efforts. For 130 years, you and your predecessors have labored to develop and educate the leadership of the Navy the nation, and our allies. And once again, you have succeeded, succeeded in producing yet another cohort of enlightened and informed leaders, well prepared for the increasingly complex and challenging security environment we face. Thank you for your dedicated service to the nation and to our friends around the globe. So to the families and the colleagues of our students that are with us here today, thank you. Your presence not only makes this ceremony more memorable for our graduates, but it also provides us an opportunity to thank you for the role you played in the accomplishments we celebrate. Life in the military is a team sport. Your love, your encouragement, your devotion, it all helped each student maintain a proper balance as they went through this intellectual journey here in Newport or at one of our satellite locations. Thank you all for your support. And then finally, to our graduates, congratulations on completing your course of studies from the Naval War College. As you all head back to your operational forces and reflect upon your time here at Newport, and in our satellite classrooms, I'd ask you keep three things in mind. First, the gift that you've been given. Second, the responsibility that you've inherited. And third, the profession you serve. This education has truly been a gift of the nation to you. As you continue to grow in rank and responsibility, I think you'll find there's no more precious a commodity than time to reflect and you've just been given a gift of a course of study, of guided reflection and debate, a gift of time to grow intellectually and to prepare, prepare for the challenges that await. Do not take that gift for granted. And I'd offer the best way to ensure that you don't take that gift for granted is to acknowledge the inherent responsibility you have inherited, a responsibility to critically and thoughtfully employ this education as you press forward. You are all headed back to the world of present shock, where your strategic horizon is going to get compressed into hours and days, not years and decades. 
and your daily agenda is probably going to be set by headlines in the newspaper or that Outlook inbox that will be sitting on your computer. And so as you come face to face with that world, you have a responsibility to remain a strategically minded critical thinker. Reflect, think, and lead. And as part of this responsibility, I'd also ask that as you move into your next assignments, that you pay this education forward with a deliberate focus on the development of those in your charge. With this educational experience, you have much to offer the in the development of our young leaders across the fleet. And don't just wait for opportunities to happen. I'd ask you to get out there, actively make opportunities to engage with them, share your thoughts and your perspectives, and help shape their habits of mind, their thinking skills, and their leadership potential. We're going to be a better Navy and a better military for doing so. Finally, as you depart today, I'd ask you to keep in mind the profession in which you serve, the profession of arms. Never forget the trust that the nation has placed in you. Never forget the obligation to uphold that trust. Never forget the professional ethic that guides your actions at home, in garrison, in the field or underway. Continue to grow as a steward of that profession. Good luck, Godspeed, and I wish you all fair winds following seas. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now sing together the service songs of our nation's armed forces. The words for, for each song can be found at the back of your programs. We'll ask that each military and civilian service member, veterans, and family members please stand as their service song is sung. Please remain standing until the completion of all service songs. Will Captain Norris, Senior Coast Guard Advisor, and all Coast Guard veterans, staff, faculty, and students, and their families please rise. Guard remain standing. Will Colonel Paul Murphy, um, stand, excuse me, will Colonel Muller, Senior Marine Corps Advisor, and all Marine Corps veterans, staff, faculty, and students and their families please rise? Coast Guard Marines, remain standing, please. And now, will Colonel Murphy, Senior Air Force Advisor, and all Air Force veteran staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise.
Colonel Goss, Senior Army Advisor, and all Army veteran staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Admiral Greenert, Chief of Naval Operations, and all Navy veteran staff, faculty, students, and their families, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise or remain standing for the benediction. Chaplain Rosender will deliver. Let us pray. Eternal God, for these men and women, a rigorous and challenging academic year is now at a close, but their voyage continues. As they go from here, serving on land, sea, or air, here and around the world, May their knowledge, skills, wisdom, and friendships be fully utilized in maintaining and spreading peace and security. Enable them with honor, courage, and commitment in all things, and protect them as they serve. I also ask that you watch over those who serve today in harm's way. Please be near to their loved ones and also to those recovering from the effects of war. Now bless these men and women as they go forth to do great things. Thank you for the service they render to their various nations. And please be with them and their families as they depart for new destinations and challenges. Through the one who saves, amen. All military personnel, please cover. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party and dignitaries. <laughs> 